as an FMI, it's part of our DNA to connect. But at some point, we need to unlock more value and we need to explore new opportunities where we have actually a use case and a business case. I'm Jürgen Joaquin. I'm the Group Head of Innovation and Digital Asset for Euroclear. And I'm uh, Stéphanie Lereux. I'm Head of Digital Assets Competence Center based between Paris and Brussels. Euroclear is a financial market infrastructure and we sit at the center of an ecosystem where we connect issuers, investors and bring in all the market liquid liquidity. And we do that at a massive scale. We process every month on our book the equivalent of the world GDP. We have more than 36 trillion of assets under custody. We already see today with POC around interoperability and things like uh, chain links are doing and the rest that they are working solution today. Now, how is that going to scale and support the market and bring the trust that needs to move billions and trillions of assets to this world? That's going to be another challenge. And the way we approach it is in a safe and gradual innovation uh, approach. And that's what's going to be, to be key. How do you make coexist traditional asset and digital asset, bringing the benefits of both worlds? The innovation is very strong within Euroclear. When you look at the role of a financial market infrastructure, we have always been here through any kind of technological evolution, even in financial evolution across the years. Whatever happened with the internet, digitalization, cloud, everything, we have been able to go through and support the growth of the capital markets. But we are in a specific momentum today. We decided to accelerate on our digital journey two years ago because we were sitting in the middle of, uh, you know, market readiness, regulatory readiness and technology maturity. And the combination of all these three elements are very important for us to accelerate and deliver new project when it comes to DLT. We are at a point where uh, we are at the end of the first phase of experimentation where some uh, DLT platforms are in production and need now to, to move to the next phase of exploration and next phase of production. So meaning how to drive uh, volume, how to drive value, bring value, unlock value for the market as a whole, how to unbark an ecosystem. And that's a very specific moment uh, where we stand today and in this context that we have going at the right pace and with the market is something very important and that's the spirit of what we have built internally. We have our own uh, digital issuance platform uh, for bonds. And the idea was not to, on the full value chain from the beginning, but trying to, to have a progressive and approach with our ecosystem in terms of co-creation. And making sure as well that whatever we are doing, we are doing it with our participants, for our participants, without compromising with the liquidity or creating any uh, problem or, or, or constraint to the bonds that we are issuing. So we had what we call an MVP approach, which is minimum viable product, but in a good way, meaning it's a small scope, really focusing on the digital issues, primary markets, and then being able to build a bridge with the legacy system to make sure that the bond can be uh, used and benefit from all the services from Euroclear, secondary market, liquidity, and make it very easy for investors to uh, use, invest, and, and transact. And that's kind of the, the funny part of the discussion, because I think that's part of a, a unique value proposition. When you look at that from outside, what we're doing with this uh, DFMI platform is actually bringing the best of both worlds. We allow issuers and the issuer ecosystem to innovate and to explore the full potential of DLT through the primary distribution. And what is important is that, you know, they need real money and they want actually the investor to be able to enjoy of all all the liquidity and to be able to hold it without all the hurdles today of the wallets and the digital custody, which is not that easy for them to have. And that's exactly what we're offering. At Euroclear, we have a renewed purpose. We innovate to bring safety, efficiency and connection to financial markets for sustainable economic growth. And I think every word in there is important and in the order. We don't forget that we're in a financial market in infrastructure and people rely a lot on us. We are trusted, 
preferred business partner for uh, for the activity of uh, of our ecosystem. So when we decided to go with the digital asset strategy, we had a lot of consultation with our participants, and we actually decided to co-create. And we have to innovate at the pace where our participants are comfortable. And that's very important. If you innovate too early, you might have a great solution at the end, but no one is going to use it. So we decided to go with a mainstream asset for Euroclear, which is basically Eurobonds. And our clients were very comfortable with that because they know it very well. It's a very liquid asset and they can compare and see the benefits of it. And I think that's a unique value proposition that we are having today because for the issuer, we are doing real innovation, bringing DLT for all the primary issuance doing DVP, atomic settlement with cash on chain. And because they want the money to be really used, we connect it to our traditional system for the investor to benefit from all the secondary market and the liquidity. So nobody has to compromise on anything. You get the innovation, you get the liquidity, and actually the beauty of, it, of this innovation that, you know, we are making things progress, but you are not feeling any pain. It's actually, you no know, business as usual, just in a better way. And we are offering uh, an optionality. You can decide to go traditional, you can decide to go DLT, that's just fine with us. The aha moment was more for me, you know, around 2010 when I understand everything that was going to happen or was happening in, in this industry and how this technology was going to actually move from Web 2 to Web 3 and disrupting the trust part. You're able to move information, now you're able to move value. And we see how that has taken up in the DeFi space. Now, when it comes to capital markets, I honestly, I don't believe there is an aha moment, at least not for us. I think it was more a momentum uh, between three main components. First of all, the market readiness, the regulatory readiness, and uh, the technological readiness. When you innovate, it's great to be always ahead of time. But if you are too much ahead of time, then it might not work. In terms of, of uh, regulatory readiness, uh, we are really at a at very uh, particular moment in time. We have seen a public sector working with private sector for years, a lot of consultation, a lot of experimentation, and we now have uh, something which is unprecedented in Europe, which is a, a regulatory sandbox, something, uh, a space where uh, companies, and not, not only uh, us, we could do it, but we don't need it, but mainly uh, other financial institutions and, and fintech as well, can uh, experiment, try uh, to push a DLT model in a safe way, safe and regulatory environment. We can see as well that uh, the central banks are working across the world on DLT. Uh, a lot of projects around retail or wholesale CBDC, experimentation, production in some cases. So that's something which is uh, very particular and, and helping the industry to move forward. And maybe the data is something which is yeah. really key because today, you know, the whole market is functioning with a lot of uh, participants and a sequential way to, to transfer or, or, or communicate the data. And this is something that DLT can bring and bring value right now is being able to get away from a sequential way of, of, of sharing data into something more circular. And that's something which is very interesting, in my opinion. And that's very much embedded in the long term vision of Euroclear. We have to recognize the sequential value set that is very inefficient today. It's inefficient, it's costly, and we're duplicating a lot of tasks. So how can we actually move from the sequential value chains and be the change agent that is going to support the market moving to something that is more circular, whatever the technology is? Let's be transparent about that. But I think that we are at the moment where we have to reconsider a little bit the foundation on how the capital markets have been built for years and bearing these growing inefficiencies that we ought to solve. I think one of the big challenges is the fragmentation of the of the DLT market. We have seen there has been a lot of experimentation, so some platform have emerged, and uh, and we need now to connect all this tokenization island together. So the the notion of interoperability between uh, the different platforms is very key to the market to drive adoption and to help investors invest into digital assets and ensure uh, being comfortable issuing into this. Uh, 
DLT platform. So that's that's a very, very key point. And that's the interoperability between the different DLT platform. And I'm talking about DLT platform, but could be as well public or private blockchain. I, I don't care about that, but really being able to connect all these islands together. And the other, uh, other point, which is uh, quite key, is the interoperability within the legacy system. So that's something that we have done ourselves for the FMI and the ability to have uh, the digital issuance on one part and the second number market on the legacy uh, system. That's very key, but that's the same kind of uh, question and, and, and roadblocks for the f all the participants in the market. They already have a system uh, which is working well. There are already some networks which are working well, and we need to be able to leverage that and make them interoperate with uh, the new world. And I think that, you know, that's very much along the lines of our philosophy, because if you go back to the asset classes for one second, I think there is a consensus that, you know, traditional assets, very liquid assets will not move overnight, you know, to the, to the DLT world. That's, that's obviously not something that is going to happen. But nevertheless, we can create bridges in order to have a seamless, you know, um, should it be digital? Should it be traditional? Why, would, why should that matter? And that's something that is very important for the investor and the issuers. We give this optionality and we create bridges between traditional assets, digital assets. We talk about the mission and the role and function of the CSD, but as CSD, we are also providing uh, access. We have a network activity. We are providing access to the different markets. And uh, this is very natural for us, for us to look at that in the digital market as well and to provide this access. So going, going back to the roadblocks that we have identified, uh, one of them being interoperability and to be able to have seamless interoperability, we need as well to have standards, smart contract standards, put some some controls or some uh, standards on the network and the governance of the network. So all that is very, very uh, natural. This is something that we are already doing in a non-digital world. And that's natural for us to position as well uh, on this topic uh, in the digital asset space. <laughs>